Hi guys and thanks for clicking on my channel. Now this is part three of a three-part series on dyeing with aniline dyes highly figured wood, applying a CA finish, in this instance glue boost, and how we polished it out, and when I say we I mean Steve Dore, a friend of mine and a fellow club member here with the Woodturners of Southwest Missouri. Steve does a great job with this series so if you've missed Part one and part two, I hope that you'll take the time to find them and watch them as well so you can see how he dyes the wood, how he applies uh, the color, how he applies the CA finish, and then of course with this video, how he polishes that out. Again, I hope that you'll consider clicking subscribe so that you'll know uh, the next time that I put out content. Thanks for watching and enjoy what Steve's doing here. This is, uh, once again, a piece of big leaf maple burl. You can see a little burl here, but it really has a lot of curl to it. And I use the same process. I started out, dyed it black, came back, sanded it back, and then I put on my red and color of choice. One of the things that um, I learned when I was, you know, uh, taking that uh, workshop with uh, Jimmy Clues is on the edge of these pieces, Take your tool rest, mm -hmm. a magic marker, mm -hmm. and then just slowly turn yeah. it. Yeah, so you've got a crisp black you've edge. You've got a yeah. crisp black line, and yeah. it works really well. Then you don't have to worry about it bleeding. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And if, you know, and that's after you, you do that after you've done your dye. Yeah. That way you cover up any, any things anything that came that's across. Try to wick to the back side. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing is this, I'll hollow out the center, but I wait and do that. After, after I mm -hmm. got all my finish done. Mm -hmm. And that way I'm, I'm not coming back because you have to be very careful on some of these places, these pieces, especially if it's a curved piece or it's got a corner, it's real easy to sand through oh, yeah. your, your, mm -hmm. your cover and, and your finish. <laughs> so uh, what I do is I start out with uh, 400 uh, wet dry sandpaper where do you get your wet dry sandpaper from? Automotive. Okay. Our Lowe's Home Depot has them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I wet this down really good because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of those what what they call the corn stuff on your piece as you're sanding it. Okay, it's it's wet down pretty good. I turn it on and I just start sanding. And the reason I start out with this versus the micro mesh is what I'm trying to do here is get rid of any red ridges mm -hmm. or those radial lines. Those radial lines, right, yeah. Right. And then you just be, make sure you you keep it wet and after a while you'll have a slurry that starts to build up. Mm -hmm. And and I can see out from this side, and you can see it starting to oh, yeah, it's building form up on, the on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that shows. Okay, I'm I'm getting rid of some of that finish. And the reason I keep dipping it in here is because I don't want anything on this sandpaper that's going to cause just a scratch to occur on my CA on that finish there. And might speed it up just a little bit there. But you're not going to do 600 and sling it all over you, are no, you? No, uh uh. <laughs> you can see on my shop wall here, I've, I've, <laughs> I've slung a little bit of it. The other day I came up, I was working on, on a piece, and I went upstairs, and Valerie says, What's that white stuff all over your shirt? <laughs> yeah, it's like when you're turning really wet green oh, wood. Oh, yeah. And you're not wearing a smock, and you get yeah. on. You you forget that you're wearing one of your better shirts. At least at my house, that gets me in trouble. Yeah, I have to stand in the corner. I get time out. Yeah. Now I do have what I'm doing here is I'm trying to clean off a couple of those little nuggets that are on there, and you can feel as you're sanding this any rough areas or ridges that are still there, and what. What you want to do is get rid of that before you start using your micro mesh. Okay, so you're starting with 400. Yeah. And then you're going to. I'm going right to the micro mesh. Oh, you're going to, straight to the right yeah. micro mesh after this. 
Yeah, and starting on the low end or midways in the low range? end. I so start twelve hundred or yeah, twelve hundred. And they yeah. they say basically that the four hundred and the twelve hundred are about the same. And the thing that you hope that doesn't happen, that you don't start seeing a lot of your color <laughs> in your slurry. Because if you start seeing your color in your slurry, that tells you you've sanded through your, your CA. And there's nothing almost more frustrating than to say, okay, now i got to go patch and or add more coats and just becomes a real headache. That just 400 has really started to bring the, well now when you stop it you see the cloud from the 400, don't you? But it really has made that grain pop just that much more, yeah. I think. And it I, looks a little bit dull, I'm sure, until yeah, you get to the higher grits. But it does. It really made it pop more. Uh huh. There must have been, uh, uh, some of those uh, ridges must change the light yes. as it hits it. And that's the way you can tell, uh, those of you that have never done pins with CA, uh, they say when you're start, starting out, you want your sanding with your, your micro mesh, you want to get a good, even, dull coat. Mm -hmm. You know, right. any, any spot that is still glossy means yeah. that it hasn't been hit. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Try to get... All those high spots. All those high spots. And here on this particular uh, style of turning, this edge right here is usually problematic uh, for whatever reason. Builds uh, up a little bit more there, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Centrifugal force is forced at that yeah. direction. Even as slow as you're going, you wouldn't think it would make it move yeah. that much. And then what I do too, after I put it on, I will turn it off. I don't, you know, I... When I first was doing it, I tried to leave it on until it was dry, and I noticed that I was getting some, you know, runs due to, to it spinning. Yeah. You can see there's a little pink coming through, and, and a lot of times that's just because the CA has, has absorbed, absorbed some of, the color. Some mm -hmm. of that color. I'm hoping that's what the case is here. Or I'm getting some from up in, in that area. Uh -huh, where you're going to hollow it out. Yeah. Okay, now, and, and you'll notice I've got a, a little towel down here on, uh, on top of my corrugated plastic just to help capture any water that's, that drips down. And again, I will come in and I do all my micro mesh wet. And I'll wet this good because otherwise you'll hit a dry spot and it'll drag on you. And that's when it drags because it hits a dry spot. That's usually when you end up getting... Going through it? Yeah. Get a little too much friction there. Yeah. And I do put... CA on this black, when I'm coming around, I'll put CA on there too uh -huh. to help it stabilize it. Yeah. Now, when you hollow this one out, are you going to leave it natural wood? Or are you going to do your gold leaf? Or? I'm, I'm going to do gold leaf on this one. Mm -hmm. I've got um, two others that are about, oh, I think six or seven inches across. That one's a teal and one's a, a royal blue that I'm going to gold leaf as well. Mm -hmm.
and every once in a while I'll just wipe off that slurry. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you're sanding, you don't want to keep all that dust on your piece. And one of the things that I do, these micro mesh pads that I get, I buy them in the, I think they're four by six sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get them at Woodcraft or uh, Wooden Whimsy you, here in Monette used to carry them, but they didn't have them. And I asked if they had them, and she said, you know, when I talked to her, she said, we don't, we're out of those right now, and we're not sure when we're going to get them. But what I like about them, I'll take them, one of those pieces, and I'll cut them up to where I get four of these little squares out of them. And then, I let that one fall on the ground. I'll number them. Mm -hmm. So I know, that way I'm not going, okay, which color's next? I know my counting skills are pretty good, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have no trouble counting to nine without, <laughs> even with my shoes on, you know? <laughs> so. You can really see it starting to. To buff up, you know, polish up really nice. Okay, I'm on number seven now out of nine. And I just keep my uh, micro mesh pads, I keep them soaking in water all the time. That way they're, they're saturated and I don't have to worry about having dry paper. <clears throat> one, of, one of the things though that is a challenge with this is you will sometimes, anyway I do, I will see real fine scratches, you know, because it's spinning on me. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. you know, I've tried, you know, some of that, you know, I will use uh, Hutt's high gloss plastic uh -huh. polish. Or a Novus or something yeah, like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it just hasn't gotten rid of it like I wish it would. Um, I've also tried the Beal Buff on these, uh -huh. and I and you really have to be careful. It'll burn it right off. Won't yeah. It? Get too hot. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never had that problem though with my pins. Uh huh. You know when I I buff them up with uh -huh. that, I've never had that problem. Smaller with the surface pins. area. Yeah. Wow, that's that's beautiful. That's after seven, or have you already gone through nine? I've gone through all nine of them. Wow. Absolutely gorge, as my daughter-in-law says. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Now, what I will do at this point, I'll come along. This is Hut Ultra Gloss Plastic Polish. And what I'll do is I'll put a little dab on here. Just a little dab will do you? That's right. Brill cream. Wow. But this isn't as thick as Brill Cream was. <laughs> Brill Cream. I was thinking Dippity Doo. I'm not oh, old enough okay. for Brill Cream. Oh, okay. But my sisters use Dippity Doo. Yes, yes. I was a little bitty kid when they were using Dippity Doo, and I always thought those were that was a funny product name. Yeah, kind of a bluish green gel. We had guys in the fraternity when I was in school that. Uh, they, had, they would use it because they had really curly hair and they were trying to get it straight. <laughs> and it'd stay, stay straight and still until they were out on the dance floor and started perspiring. <laughs> 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 well, but once you've convinced that young lady to dance with you, everything else is not important at that yeah. point. Now, again, the reason for this polish is just to, 
to help hide any micro scratches yeah. and polish it up and as well. And polish it up a little bit, yeah. And I slowly add speed to it. And we have to address you're using a piece of cloth, not a paper towel. Yes. But you yes. are spinning at a relatively slow speed. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's under 400 right, right now. Right. But I will crank it up. And you're working on a flat piece too. Yes. That is a lot less likely to grab. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, Gorgeous. Beautiful. Let me see if I can get this camera here to the lights just a little bit brighter at the top. It's hitting it. Wow. Roll that just a little bit, Steve. Slowly. There you go. Wow. Can you see the chatoyance? Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous. Now, there's a few white specks in here. That's from the polish, and I'll, uh -huh. I'll just get a little toothbrush and clean that out. Take a little water and clean that out, and you won't even know it's there. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. I see a, a little bit of a dimple there. Yeah. Wow. What will you name this piece? I have some suggestions already. Um, I thought about something relating to the Australian uh, fires. Oh, yeah. Inferno was the first yeah. thing that came to uh -huh. my mind. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it does make you think of that. Kind of a fire uh -huh. fire effect. Uh -huh. Yeah. Gorgeous. Now, and at this point, you you said you would just take the little spot, little white spots, use a toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah. Water just yep. kind of okay. put it in there and then dry mm -hmm. it cuz you're not going to scratch that surface with a with a toothbrush. Right. Right. Soft enough. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm no brass bristle brushes. No, no brass bristle no brushes. No steel. No steel. No Brillo now, pad. Now, one thing, <laughs> when I get ready to, to hollow this out, I will take my small parting tool, this one right here, uh -huh. and I will come in and I will cut a line. That way I've got a good starting point. Starting point, mm -hmm. crisp point, because I don't want to have all of a sudden, whoops, yeah, it jump all the way across. Good. Right. And... Uh, I just do that as a precaution. Now, is that the voice of experience? Uh, no, that actually was planning ahead. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, good. and it fit on all on one sheet of paper. I didn't have to <laughs> make it come down. <laughs> but, yeah. That's a gorgeous piece. Thank you. And we'll have pictures of this once, once you complete it as well? Yes, yes. That'll be awesome. And I'll take it off here and, and try and show it is I do have the back and I'll come along and, and do it again. I already, I put a coat of, of uh, oil on this before I even started putting the dye on. And one of the reasons I do that is I want to go in there and fill in any open pores so that if any liquid, any of the dye comes through, it doesn't come all the way through to the, to the back side. Mm -hmm. And so I'll put some dye in here, or not dye, but some oil on here beforehand. And then it's already finished. I've signed it, dated it, and this puppy's... Now that little ring of white that might show up on the camera is just part of the slurry that you'll wipe off. Right? Yes, yes. Around here, that's yeah. just some of that slurry. Take that off with DNA or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or just water or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll come back and I'll put another coat of oil mm -hmm. on here. Okay, but, so um, I want to thank Steve for letting me come oh, in. Oh, sure. And, thank uh, you. Oh, thank you, my good you know, man. I, I really enjoyed uh, learning your process here. Uh, those of us that have been turning for years, we always learn something new. And if you're not willing to learn something new, you might as well be planted. <laughs> you got to keep learning. <laughs> That's right. But That's right. You were, you were just saying with this piece that you're seeing, of course, you see more flaws. Yeah. The maker always sees more flaws than, than anybody else. And, but. and what I'm going to have to do, because I can see a lot of little pit marks in here because of the unevenness of the application of the CA, 
And so what I'm going to have to do is put this back on the lathe, go, with the, go back to 400, smooth it all out, and then just go through the yeah, process yeah. again. But, yeah, yeah, but you can tell, even with the radial stuff, you can, yeah. you can just tell how that uh, glue boost has really... Pops it. Oh, it pops it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And, you know, the backside of it with oil just really, oh, it, it accentuates it, doesn't it? Yeah. It just really, and I really appreciate when you get this done. He told me that this was going to be my piece just, <laughs> just because he loves me. A picture of it. A picture uh, of it. <laughs> oh, that's not what you said. But anyway, um, a gorgeous uh, piece it is a great project. And Steve, thanks for showing us how you use well, Blue Boost. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you for being here and taking your time. And Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I'll put some links at the bottom of this video where you can pick up some of the products that Steve mentioned. Uh, there'll be a link at least to Glue Boost and a few of the other things uh, as we went along, so you'll be able to find a good source for these things. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Don't Take forget, don't forget, click subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and hit the bell icon so you'll be reminded when there's another video of probably Steve. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a better entertainer than I am. Well, I, that's... Yeah. I don't know about that. Okay, so, so here here we go, here we go. How's my hair? <laughs> well, you might want to comb it. Oh, okay. <laughs>